All right, moving on to our next game. We got through all the space games from 79. Now we're doing all the star games. Star Wars games. Now we have Star Hawk in 1979, or released sometime in 1979. Here is the advertisement flyer. This is by Cinematronics, which were pushing the vector-based graphics, and that's what we're going to get on this one. 3D action, 3D realism, 3D profits. Ships maneuver and explode in all directions. And then there's the example of the arcade cabinet. While it's running, too, by the way. I don't know if you, how well you can see it from there. And we've seen other vector graphics games by Cinematronics. This is the control panel. Looks like we got lots of different buttons. Usually they're pretty simple. This might be a more complicated vector graphics game. The most popular we've seen, obviously, was Asteroids. That one was by Atari. Atari was trying to catch up to what had been done by the other companies. So Cinematronics was the first one to have vector-based graphics. And we, we now are going to see other companies emulating and using those. So yeah, we have uh, different speeds and then moving our joystick and fire as our controls. So this is Starhawk. Let's take a look at the manual. Here's the service and owner's manual by Cinematronics. Starhawk. Copyright 1979. Anything about the game itself. All right, so <laughs> the warranty for Starhawk. And then uh, wants to be good at defects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Starhawk is designed much the same as a, a conventional video games. The only major exception to this is the fact that Starhawk game is provided with an alternate means of visual display. The patented vector beam monitoring system. So vector graphics wasn't just the, uh, the way it was programmed. You had to have a screen that could display the vector graphics. Without going into too much detail about what vector graphics are... It is not drawing across the screen like every other graphic. It is literally pointing and displaying the, 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 the vector graphic on the display at once. So it's drawing the line directly to one spot on the screen instead of having to do the scan all the way across like raster effect graphics. So that's what made this so special. It's not just programmed differently and then you use a, uh, the same monitor. No, you have to have a vector monitor to play vector-based graphics games. All right, it's 1979. We're stepping up to the arcade playing Starhawk by Cinematronics. It's the new cool vector-based graphics game. Awesome, and we even got the controls here at the bottom. So you can see we got slow, medium, fast, and uh, one or two players. Let me take a look at the con controls for this screen. So it looks like the three different buttons there. And, oh, we're going to have a blast with this one. Okay, so here we go. Putting a quarter in for Star Hawk. And you can see our one credit's displayed. We're going to go ahead and push start. And, wow, this is a play where we have a reticle. So we are not in control of the scrolling. We are, we even got the sound effects. Sounds fantastic. But it is, uh, ships are flying at us three-dimensionally. Uh, we've seen a few other first-person shooter games, and they've been from the vector-based graphics games. The control, though, is just the reticle. Um, so I'm not having control over how fast I go. I can't speed it up. Oh, yeah, there we go. I can't make, I can, I, I can make it go fast and slow. Get him, get him, get him. Oh, but this is this is the exactly what we're looking for for the golden age of arcade right here. Starhawk is it. To play this in the arcades at the time uh, was um, fantastic. Wow, this is amazing. I love how uh, it, it's fun to shoot things, blow them up. And it feels, it feels kind of like we're playing Star Wars, obviously, because it looks like we're doing the trench run. But no, it's Starhawk. <laughs> and they even explode with the, the, the pieces coming apart using the, the, the vector graphics. I'm still going on one quarter, by the way. This is one credit. I'm uh, racking up the high score. Get him, get him. Oh, yes. Yeah, awesome. I don't know if I'm getting more points for going fast or slow, but they're giving us the illusion that we're in the control or in control of the ship. But no, we're just in control of the reticle moving it around. <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. Simple gameplay, great look. Uh, awesome for 1979. We're going to give that because of the time. Um, we had another game that used the reticle only. We played so many games, I, I did not remember. But we have seen it, so we're going to give this one four stars. Because the gameplay is not as good to push it higher than that, but the, the the look and feel of the game is above par. That's awesome. All right, so that was Starhawk. Let's move on to our next game. 
This is straight flush, which sounds like a card gambling game, but no, it looks like it's a Pong clone. Let's take a look at the artwork for straight flush. It's by Taito. So this was released in Japan first, if they were the developers. And then there's a terrible example of the arcade cabinet. And then for the uh, circuit board, looks like we have a knob or paddle for uh, a ball and paddle based game. Yeah, so we're just moving left and right. And I'm not familiar with what, yeah, it's a, a, a Japanese game by Taito. One of the very early Taito games. We're going to Japan in 1979 playing straight flush in the arcades by Taito. And there it is. Let's put a quarter in and see what happens. There's our 25 cents. Press the one player button and here we go. So I'm in control of paddle at the bottom. And yep, it's gonna do ball and paddle based game. Uh, don't adjust your sound. I'm getting no sound coming from the game itself, but it is taking elements of pinball and pong or, or uh, breakout, I should say. I really thought they were gonna have some element of um, cards. I guess on the left, you can see we got 10 jack. It looks like it's gonna start with um, giving us card hands, but there's no amount of randomness. It's more similar to uh, pinball. So I'd say they, they've now upped the ante. We've seen, we've seen pinball video games. We've seen breakout video games. We've seen pinball and breakout. And this one ups the ante one more time. So it's pinball, breakout, and cards. Uh, but a uh, simple concept, fun to play. It's just like any other breakout game. I love it. Too bad we don't have the sound for it, though. A lot of these games still are, oh, okay, cool. Number match. Oh, so we get times 10. Based on the cards you get, you get multipliers for uh, your score. So that's awesome. And we've seen enough of Straight Flush. So for the time, I'm going to go and give that one a three and a half star. It's adding one other element, so so nuanced of, uh, and, and so fascinating to see developers what see developers take on what other games have, have that concept and just change one thing, uh, one notch, and that's really what the the channel is about. That's what chronologically gaming is about. We're gonna see the small changes that happen throughout the video game history. That is awesome. All right, moving on to our next game. This is Sundance by Cinematronics, so another vector-based video game. We're going back to the arcades to play some more vector games. Maybe that's what the golden age of arcades is really about. It's about uh, vector-based games because they're just so cool compared to everything else we've seen. All right, so this is Sundance by Cinematronics on the exclusive vector beam monitor. 16 levels of line intensity explode on the screen. Line intensity. There's our arcade cabinet. Awesome artwork. They got the balls of fire around the outside. And then for the control panel, oh my gosh, is that... <laughs> there's there's another fascination with the 70s and number pads. Like, everyone needed to have number pads. And we heard someone from the chat a few episodes back. They said number pads are so popular, I'm surprised they're not in the arcades. And there you go. You got your wish. This is a number pad for an arcade, <laughs> an arcade control pad. Uh, so I don't know how we're going to control this one if we have a number pad, but we'll see what happens. All right, so let's see. We have no manual. We're just going to go right in. 1979, this is Sundance in the arcades by Cinematronics. Oh, and we got all the artwork. Sweet. So if you look at the top, this is what you see at the, the not the marquee, but the instructions for how to play the game. They're very, very small, so I understand it, how it's difficult to tell you. But it looks like we just uh, ex explaining how to put a quarter in, the skill levels, and then one or two players. I want to see the controls for this game. Okay, so I thought so. It is using the number pad. So we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. And put in... Uh, one, okay, one, uh, put my quarter in and we're going to push one player and let's see how this runs. Okay, very cool. So I have control of the number pad and as you can see, it is dropping things down. I have to look at the depth of them. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, so it is a, a reverse style game of, can I do more, can I do more than one? I can't. So I have to time it and only can open one portal at a time. I have to know... Uh, the the, the three-dimensional depth of everything and I really think this would be the first puzzle game we've ever played ever on the channel or we, that we've seen this might be the very first puzzle game if you want to call it that because it, it, it's using action elements of things dropping 
But this is Sundance. I've never even heard of this. This is awesome. So you can see I have to time and know where everything's going to drop based on how the vector graphics are displaying how far they are. And you can see we have some that bounce. Oh, wait. It's ending. Looks like I got 23. Does that mean I have lost or I move on to the next level? That might be it. So I just got the high score of 23. So I guess if you can keep going, you can keep, uh, you, you, you might be able to go to another level or not. Let's see if I'm able to still play on one quarter. Is it still going? No, it's not. It's now in a track mode. Okay, that's pretty fun. I'm going to do it one more time. Let's do another one player. And you can see here, you're, you're playing on the arcade cabinet, which has, wait a second. We have top mode two. Wait, I'm, I was only using a number pad on the bottom. Oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, you're able to use both number pads. So here, let's put our uh, let's put our quarter in and push start. Let's see if it works for us. Okay, so it is only working on one side. Yeah, so the other side is not letting me open the portals to it, but still the idea that. Uh, very original. N n haven't seen anything like this. This is awesome. Okay, so that was Sundance, released sometime in 1970, uh, 1979. I'm blown away. I had no idea that uh, this one existed. That's uh, for, for the time, we're giving that five stars. I think that's the very first puzzle game ever, uh, if you want to consider it that. That is awesome. Okay, so that was Sundance. And let's make that our last game of the evening. We'll stop in the S's. So the way this works is we're in 1979 playing all the rest of the games that were released at some point in 1979. We're trucking ahead to get to um, the, the, the 80s. And so as we go through the rest of the games, they're going to be in alphabetical order until we get to the very end. So that would be the end of our episode for tonight. But we will catch you next time. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9 p.m. Central, so join us and let me know if there's any games that we missed on the way. You can always check me out on YouTube to see any old videos or any of the archival ones before the live stream. Just tell your friends that there's some crazy guy out there playing every single video game or trying to in chronological order. You can look me up on Twitter, on Instagram, and YouTube. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We'll catch you next time.